What's up everybody? I'm back. We're gonna talk about gliders today. What's going on everybody? My name is Brian. You're watching Angling Anarchy. And uh, after taking a little bit of time off, we are back with a glide bait instructional. I've got my good friend, Rich Reinert, the madman of muskies of the Northwoods, <laughs> I like to call him. <laughs> you know. But uh, we're out uh, We're out doing a little bit of fishing today, uh, seeing a couple fish, but we are gonna take some time to talk about some gliders because we've had, we both had people ask us about the gliders that we use, how, how they run, what time of the year to use them. So we're just gonna run through the seasons real quick, I think, and as we go along, we're gonna talk about our favorite gliders that we like to use. One of the very first gliders that I like to use in, in starting the season with in the spring is a, is a Chaos Tackle Blunt Nose. Mm -hmm. Okay, I made sure that I brought some nice, you know, shiny new baits, you know. <laughs> I picked them all out before you came up last night. I've but, got all my beat up ones over here, so. Okay, <laughs> well, I'm pretty fortunate to have a lot of these, you know. Anyways, this is a Blunt Nose. Yep. The key thing about a Blunt Nose Okay, none of these gliders, no matter what we talk about, you know, they're not hard to work. I mean, I, th I, th I think the biggest mistake guys make is to overworking the gliders yep. instead of letting the glider work, you know, basically tossing it out and, and just easy, just an easy pull and, and, and a, you know, maybe a quarter spin of your reel handle and the baits will work on their own, okay? The reason I like this in the, in the, late, in the spring is because it has a tendency to run deeper. That's exactly the reason I like it. That yeah. Even though it's smaller than its sort of cousin or brother, whatever you want to call it, the round nose glider, the Kodiak round nose glider, that blunt nose and that uh, shorter stature gets deeper. And I've, I've caught so many fish in the spring in Iowa, uh, Indiana, and even Wisconsin with this little guy. As the season progresses, um, you know, I kind of, we both, uh, you know, you know Rusty's. Oh, yeah. Rusty Rollins. I know Rusty real good. Rusty's Custom Lures. Rusty's got some really unique, you know, baits. Beautiful baits. Look at there. This There's is my that. this is my beat up one. <laughs> the old beat up six sucker. That That's unbelievable. That's a pretty one right there. He just painted for, this, for me this year, but mm -hmm. I, I didn't get it. You know, Rusty's backed up. I mean, no doubt about it. You know, you've had a lot of help with that. You know, I've helped him out and... You know, but you know, this six sucker is probably one of the easiest gliders to work on the marketplace. I would classify this bait, this glider, as a bait when you're searching for fish and you need an erratic action when the fish are in a, in a neutral to inactive, you know, mood. This is a really great bait to use, this one right here. And I, there's just something about that little dangly blade on the back that he, he puts on these that I just absolutely love. I mean, I, I used to really like throwing the glide baits with the soft tails, and I still do. But there's just there's something about that little dangly blade that when you when you pop this bait back and forth, and you pop it, and you just let it sit, and it's doing its little fall, and right. that little blade is just twinkling down there. It looks really cool in the water, and it, it gives me all the confidence in the world. And that's we know that's what musky fishing's about. If you believe this bait is going to catch you something, you're, you're going to fish it so much better and have such better chance of catching a fish on it. So. Exactly. So, you know, regardless, you know, he makes them in five, six. I know the fives are kind of like in, you know, prototype. Oh, you got one. I got one. You know, <laughs> you got one. But we get in a situation now, we're in the early, in late spring, early summer, and the panfish come in to spawn, mm -hmm. okay? It's been very hard to find a glider, you know, that basically dances in place mm -hmm. and then i came across a bait called a glitch and this is a glitch it's made by conklin lures um he's in he's from you know mike conklin's from central wisconsin he basically hand carves every one of these bodies he hand carves sands them down you know everyone by hand it's amazing the guys <laughs> you know he, i mean he actually still does it the old way uh, therefore, they're very limited. You can get yep. yourself one of these and or his pedigree, you know, do so. Yep. Because as and you, the pedigree is the one with the little hatchet blade on the back, Exactly. Right? Yep. The purpose of this twitch or this uh, this glitch is what it's called. Yep. It's, uh, it's a glide 
but you, you make it glide by twitching it and you can just hold it in place. And it just kind of walks in place really slow. I guess I would, I would uh, compare it to a topwater bait that I love and you guys have all seen me use is the Bubba where instead of a big sweeping glide back and forth like some of these other glide baits have, this sort of just kind of walks in place like that Bubba does. Right. And I think it's that's kind of cool because sometimes fish will miss a glide bait. I mean, they'll come into it because it's swinging wide back and forth. But I think if you get something that kind of tracks in a line, that fish can hone in on it a little bit better yep. and you might get some better hooks into it. Right. Well, now does this bait go from side to side, but it's got a belly yeah, roll nice, to it. Yeah, you know, yep. it. It looks beautiful. We were playing with this. This is a wild color. That I think, I don't know what he's going to call this, but it, to me, I call it Mike's mistake. <laughs> you know, it, it, he never intended to paint this. He did a little of this, a little of that. You know, it's just... It's, it's beautiful in the water, yeah. really a lot of flash to it, even though it's a darker bait. This is a pedigree. Um, it's that little hatchet blade that Brian was talking about. This one's really good in shallow to medium depths. It works a little faster than the glitch, mm -hmm. but again, it's a slower moving bait. The really cool thing about both these baits is it doesn't take a lot to move them. You can cast them out and just crank your reel handle and those baits will walk and roll back and forth with just a crank of the reel you know, handle. And there's, there's that balance. There's so many of these glide baits that I can, if you, if you get the cadence down, you can just work it just by simply spin it, spin it forward, spin it back, spin it forward, pop, 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 pop. I mean, you can add a little bit of uh, rod action to it if you want to, but, uh, you know, it, it does take a, a little bit of practice with some of these, but it's it's more of just getting the feel for it. I mean, th these yeah. baits will all go side to side for you. There are some gliders on the market that you really got to work hard to get them to walk. And, and they'll walk, and they'll walk from side to side, but there's no belly roll, there's no flash. I basically call those baits hypnotizers. Sure. I'm not saying they're bad, but when they're coming in, they're, they're so perfect, they walk from side to side, and pretty soon you'll get a fish that is following this bait, and they'll sit there, and you'll see the fish's head go left. You just, I, I, you right. just see the fish go, uh, 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 and then it gets to the boat, and nothing happens, and away the fish goes. That's called a hypnotizer. Yep. And so I've kind of separated my, myself away from the hypnotizers and have kind of stuck with the baits that have worked well for me. These baits have got a lot of action to them. Here's something that's kind of a unique bait, okay? It's, and, and again, one thing about all these gliders, they're all really limited you know run baits yeah they're not you know mass produce and i think that's why they work so well this bait here is made by tom harrison it's uh, called a manatee mm -hmm. okay and this bait will it kind of looks like a suet to some degree sure but it will work with an up and down motion you know dive down back up and then you slow it down it'll start walking from side to side sure very unique bait. Um, guys have done very, very well with these. I'm trying to figure out where these fit in, but I tell you one thing: in, in rivers and current, this bait has been dynamite. Sure. How about we go into fall, late fall, winter? What are you thinking for that sort of thing? Well, if I'm going to fish late fall, winter, you know, remember the bait that we started out with? You know, in the you know, in the spring of the year. Yep. I'm not afraid to throw this blunt nose. Sure. This bait here is excellent, not only in the spring of the year, but it's excellent in the fall. Sure. Late fall. If I had to choose, you know, three or four, depending on the condition I'm fishing, as I mentioned before, the six sucker, mm -hmm. the six sucker, this bait here, you can work it fast, you can work it slow. Yep. You can't fish this bait wrong. Right. Again, it's just like the manatee, it's one of the easiest baits to work on the water it's a bait that I, I hate to say this i would call like a customer bait mm -hmm. for people that are having a hard time throwing gliders sure this is the one i usually reach for for them okay um but in the late fall early winter this is this is it right here this, Those two? These, these three okay these three i'm gonna add this one to it that's oh, a, yeah. that's a fortune teller yeah i've done some you guys have probably seen me do some damage with this guy late fall into winter um this one you can just it sweeps so far from side to side uh when you let it go it just kind of rolls it and does again, it has a roll to it again maybe. you've got the little dangle blade in the back just fluttering away so uh this is this 
for me, late fall winter shows up, I put this on and spot weld it onto the old leader because it, it usually stays on. I've got a smaller version of that mm -hmm. where I fish, you know, there's some shad and crappies, bingo, yep. and that come in, you know, that are up shallow. And uh, I've got the smaller size like you, you yep. had there. I, I, um, I found something interesting. I, I you know, I, I have a tendency to fish the smaller baits. I looked at that and I said, you're <laughs> out of your mind. That's a 10-inch heavyweight. That's a 10-inch heavyweight. But I'm going <laughs> to tell you, this bait, we were just playing around with that. Oh my. It looks so, if you have the patience, because you, it's almost one of those baits where you have to give it the pull and you have to let it pause because it's moving this way. But it's, it's rolling. And, and it's rolling. A lot and of flash. There's so much movement I to this bait. I was impressed, but I'm going to tell you, for us older guys, <laughs> that ain't happening. That is not happening. That would dislocate your shoulder. Most nice. of these other baits you can throw on a, a nine foot, or you know, so you're using a seven eleven. I'm using a nine foot, medium heavy, you know, an ounce to four ounce rated type rods. This you're going to want to throw on, you know, something that's rated three to ten ounces, like right. like a chaos tackle shock and awe is probably what I would throw this on, like a nine foot shock no, and awe. So I use a seven eleven. Yep. You know, I've got it right there. It's a seven eleven. It's what it's a two to eight ounce blank. It's made by Elk River Rods. You know, you saw me using it. Mm -hmm. You got the feel them. They're light. They're you know they're they're a nice feeling rod. Ironically, Chaos Tackle. It's a mass produced rod. You know they've got a 710 2020. Mm -hmm. Same thing. It's it's a nice rod. There's a lot of there's a lot of hidden power in both those blanks. This is a the Elk River is a ERX musky is what he calls it. But man, it's just a it's it's a nice rod. I use the two to six, uh, the two to eight. That's mm -hmm. that, that handles everything that I need. Uh, my rods basically are seven six, seven eleven, because as you can see, I fish out of a toughie, mm -hmm. you know. And um, I think you have a fish uh, crest fish hawk. Fish hawk. Yep. Some of these guys that are fishing out of a Ranger six twenty, I understand why they want to fish an eight six and nine foot rod. But they, one thing is, there's a lot of people in this industry that say, you got to use an 8'6 and 9 foot rod. No, you do not. You got to look at the boat that you're fishing out of, you got to look at your height, and you got to fish what's best for you. Well, and I was going to say that. I, I can fish a 9 foot rod out of this boat, no problem. You know, the rod angle is out a little bit further, but as I said before, I'm using the reel to give these, impart the action to a lot of these lures. If I want to use the rod instead of working straight down, which I know that's how most people like to work a glider is kind of straight down, I just work it off to the side. So again, it, there's, there's a lot of different factors because people will ask, what rod do I get? And a, a nine foot, well, I can't do that because I work it this way. Well, then maybe a 711 or a 710. Right. So you, there, there's a lot of different things you have to take into account, but you know, you should take into account all of those things before you spend two, three, $400 uh, yeah. on a rod, so. Well, yes, hopefully that was helpful. I think we are going to go uh, try to get a fish or two here. Uh, it was nice just to come in, film this, and take a break because it is hot out there and the shade is really nice. Sweltering. So uh, with that, I really appreciate every single one of you watching this mess. And I'll see you on the next video.